setting as precious as Dragon Lance, I have five wishes that I hope Watsy had the clairvoyance of doing to put into the Shadow of the Dragon Queen, the new Dragon Lance Dungeons and Dragons module coming out this year. Hi everybody, my name is Justin. Welcome to Game On, a show all about tabletop gaming from RPGs to board games and everything in between. When this video comes out, it'll be my birthday. Woohoo! And I have a couple of things, a wish list, if you will, about the new Dragonlance book, the module Shadow of the Dragon Queen, that I hope Watsy has done for the book. Now, I already know that the books are already published, they've already been printed, they're already in their bindings. There's nothing Watsy can do right now to change what they've already done if they watch this video, but I hope they had the clairvoyance to do these five things that I really think would make this module better than, well, what Spelljammer was. And because this module is so precious, it's really behoove them to not screw it up. So let's get into these wishes. These are in no particular order. I don't think any of them are any more important than another. But I'm going to start with number one, and that is please, Watsy, give DMs tips, tricks, and even permission to play dragons as their scheming, conniving, high intelligent casting stat block suggests that they should be played as. Dragons in Dragonlance are terrifying. They are the world enders. They are here to destroy the world. I mean, Dragonlance has already had so many cataclysms and world ending situations, but this is designed to show how scary a dragon can be. The Hickmans did a really good job in the original uh, novels and module to show that dragons are terrifying. And 5th edition dragons are scary, don't get me wrong, but 5th edition PCs are little mini superheroes. They're actually large superheroes. And fighting a dragon isn't really that big of a deal in 5th edition. But if you play the dragons right, the dragons never touch the ground. They breathe their fire or acid weapon on you. They swoop down with their stealth proficiency and tuck their, their wings in and glide down like an owl. Pick up your barbarian and throw him 300 feet. These dragons are not going to fight you toe to toe. And even if you had a pretty decently high, let's say paladin who readies an action and smites when it hits this dragon, when it swoops down, probably you're not going to kill this dragon. You don't have high level magic, you're not a dragon yourself, and you probably don't have a dragon lance, so it's just going to be more like a tickle. I want these enemies to be terrifying. I want the PCs to not want to pick a fight with these dragons. I want them to duck in cover, especially at lower levels when they see a dragon pass by overhead. Dragons are terrifying and I want Watsy to give permission to DMs to play the dragons as terrifying as they should be played in general play. So speaking of dragons, for my wish number two, I really want Watsy to portray just how devastating it is to go to war, a global war, with humanoids versus dragons and dragon kin. So for those of you who don't know, Shadow of the Dragon Queen should probably be taking place during the War of the Lance, which is in the latter half of the Age of Despair. If none of that made any sense to you, that's okay. You should hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon because I'm going to be making a series of videos I call the Primer Series for those of you who aren't very well learned about the Dragon Lens setting. You either haven't played any of the modules or you haven't read the books, which is fine. My Primer series is going to help get you up to speed in the world of Kryn, which is the planet that is Dragonlance. So if you have any kind of doubts on what the world is doing and what the heck is going on in Dragonlance, make sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell and watch those videos. Now this is the War of the Lands. This is a big globe-spanning, basically, war against dragons. I want Watsy to really do their best to drive home just how bad a war-torn country looks like. So your players might have the entertainer or the acolyte background that lets them get free room and board at certain places. Well, the inns and the churches, temples here, they 
we don't really have much space. We have a lot of casualties from this war. I mean, the war, you know, there's a battle just going on up about a mile <laughs> over those hills. And right now we have people being carried in stretchers covered in acid burns and bite marks. And you can spend the night if you want, but you're going to have to help with surgery on these people. Some of these are civilians. Some of these are, you know, younger civilians who are just getting caught in the middle of this giant freestanding war between the humanoids and the dragonkin. Lord Sop is terrifying with his dragonkin and Tachesis, or probably in this version Tiamat, thanks to the multiverse thing that D&D 5th edition is doing, they are ruthless. They are trying to take over this world and they will do whatever they can. They will kill everybody in their way. That's why we have such big standing armies trying to defeat them, trying to help the world. So when your players with the Outlander background who can normally feed themselves and like what four or five other people in their party, they're like, what do you mean I can't feed myself? Where's all the berries and the fish? Well, we had a whole army come through here. Do you know what happens when a whole army, like a marching army comes through an area, especially in medieval times? That area is wiped out with everything that could be even thought to be edible. <laughs> so I want it to be where these, these luxuries that you're used to having as a player are a lot harder to come by. You want to get money for this quest? Your reward for this quest, for going over that hill and fighting with the rest of these soldiers, is that you might get to live tomorrow. <laughs> you know, the, there might be a world tomorrow. Who cares about gold when everybody is probably going to die if you don't go over and fight? So I think it would be fun to kind of subvert the player's expectations when you really drive home how war-torn the world is. So wish number three is more of a fan service thing than anything else. Basically, the main characters of the books and the characters that you kind of play through and with in the older modules are called the Companions. And I'm not going to name them all, but they are kind of like the main drivers of the story. They are the heroes of the Dragonlance setting, at least during this time. I don't want to be railroaded into following in their footsteps. It would be awesome if I could meet them. It would be awesome, you know, if I could hear of their, you know, their great doings. But I want them to be over here in this part of the battle, and I want to be over there. I don't want to be grouped up with them. They have the biggest plot armor in the world. They are railroaded through novels, and older module players will tell you that you're kind of railroaded to follow their footsteps as opposed to, at least in earlier editions, um, as opposed to being able to kind of create your own story. But I really want to do my own thing, create my own stories, and help save the world in my own way. Wish number four is going to sound a little bit dubious, but those of you who have played or have read the Dragonlance setting books, can probably back me up on this. I think that players who want to play Dragonborn and Elves should be allowed to, but I think that they should be given fair warning that they are going to be treated differently, at least when it comes to social interaction. So Chromatic Dragons and dra dra Dragonlance are just terrible. Uh, they're mean, evil, mischievous, conniving things. Metallic Dragons aren't really that much better, like they're not evil but they're also not always helpful. <laughs> and uh, the humanoids uh, on Kryn, which is Dragonlance's planet, don't really see too kindly to dragons. Now, when the Hickmans were originally writing this, these books and these modules, they didn't see that players would probably be playing as a race of dragons. It would be very difficult for a dragonborn to be trusted in society. Because, yeah, you might seem like a good guy, but you are part dragon, and dragons are evil, and they're trying to... That dragon, you know, over there killed my wife last year. I think that it, you look like one of them. You must be evil. And I know that that's kind of a touchy subject, especially in this day and age. But in the the grand scheme of the setting of Dragonlance, it's going to be difficult to play a dragonborn, and I think it should be. I think that you should have the ability to show that you are a good guy. Um, and I use good guy as just like a general term. You are uh, a fighter for good. I think that you should be able to, as a player, help overcome the stigma that dragonborns are, you know, all of them are evil. Now as for elves, 
The elves, which you can learn about again in my primer, are kind of secluded from the rest of the humanoids and they're not really nice to each other. <laughs> Uh, they are, they're, it's not like Tolkien where the elves are secluded but they'll kind of help with the humans. It's more like they'll probably kill each other on sight. <laughs> and so playing as an elf would be a little bit difficult, I think. Uh, just as difficult as a dragonborn. But I think it would be fun to overcome the stigma that all elves are just out for themselves and they don't want to help the rest of the humanoids to help save the very planet that they all live on. Wish number five, and this is another big one and it is tied directly to the setting that is Dragonlance, specifically during the War of the Lance. That is, I think that it would be cool if druids actually were seen as the main healers, maybe even get a boost in their healing because during the war of the lance until golden moon has her epiphany and the gods come back and you know clerics can do their things again most of the gods of divine magic and even the gods of the two gods of arcane magic kind of abandon the world and really the only way you can get magic is through the primal primalness of nature itself I think it would be unfair, especially in 5th edition, to take away all the healing magic that's out there. So I think what would be cool is if they buff druidic magic when it comes to healing because they're really the only ones in the Dragonlance setting that can do a whole lot of healing because, again, the divine uh, magic users aren't really getting a whole lot of power from their gods because the gods have abandoned Kryn. So those are my five wishes for the new Shadow of the Dragon Queen Dragonlance module. Again, I know that it's already printed, it's already, you know, being shipped, it's in warehouses, people are ready to put it out on their bookshelves at their gaming store. But I really hope that WotC took some of these things that I think would make the game great and not really screw up the setting, <laughs> like I think they did with Spelljammer. I really hope that they did that. No. What I want to know in the comments below is what do you guys think about this? Do you think that my five wishes are appropriate? Do you think I should have asked for other things? Let us know in the comments below. Once again, my name is Justin. From the very bottom of my heart, I thank you all for watching. Now grab some dice, make up a character, and game on.